Hey friends, you guys have requested a yoga for fertility treatment class when you're using progesterone injections specifically, so this class is for you. So often when you're using these injections, you're getting quite a lot of soreness in the upper part of the glute. So we're gonna address that by gently stretching into that area and also gently moving that area because that can help to distribute the progesterone around the body more effectively and also help to reduce soreness. Therefore, this class is suitable for ovulation, for the two week wait, and for early pregnancy because often progesterone injections are used during this time. We'll also do breath work and meditation to hopefully ease some of that anxiety and stress that you're likely feeling throughout the two week wait, waiting for results, waiting to hear that everything is okay. It can be a time where you feel all tight, all stressed out, and often we don't have anyone to talk to at this time because we're still keeping quite quiet on our treatments or on the pregnancy. So I hope that this class helps to bring you just a little bit of freedom in your body, freedom in your mind, and a little bit of peace as well. If you would like other classes for the different stages of IVF or other fertility treatments, I'll leave some links below for you. And if you are brand new to fertility yoga, I'll leave my free guide linked below as well. All right, we're gonna start our practice today just in a comfortable seat. And you can see that I'm using a bolster. This is just to keep my hips a little bit higher and so that a little bit less pressure is up on that upper glute. So if this is comfortable for you, you're welcome to get a bolster or a cushion or a roll blanket, something like that, just to lift you up a bit. If it's not, you can feel free to just sit on the floor as you naturally would. We're also gonna be using a heat pack in our Shavasana today, so make sure you've got your heat pack ready. So I'm just using a hot water bottle, but you can use any sort of wheat pack or something like that just to bring some heat onto the sore area as well. So from your comfortable seat, I just want you to take a few breaths just to center yourself here. Just to arrive in our practice. So in through the nose and out through the nose. In. And out. So start by taking a few circles. So still keeping the breath slow and steady, inhaling as you move the chest forward and exhaling as you round, tuck the chin, round through that back. Feel free to move nice and slowly. Inhale as you move forward, exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Let's reverse our circles. Inhale in the opposite direction. So opening up through the chest. And exhale. I always like to close down my eyes when I practice, but you're welcome to do whatever feels right for you. It's just getting some gentle movement into the body to start. Just find your center, find your breath. Maybe sighing it out if that feels good. Taking a deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. <sighs> good. All right, so we're gonna come into our half lotus. So again, you might wanna stay up on the bolster or you might wanna slide it out the way or even just come a little bit lower on it. So our half lotus looks like having our ankle stacked up on our knee and our opposite knee stacked on the ankle. However, that might be a little bit too much for you at the moment. If it is, you can slide the foot back to where it feels comfortable. So it might be on the calf. You might simply be ankles on ankles. That's perfectly fine as well. So work out where you wanna be. And what this is gonna do is stretch quite deeply into the hip. So work out where it feels best for you. We are gonna add some movement and breath to this pose. If you are early days pregnant, just be aware that you're starting to get relaxed and in the body. So this is where we don't wanna to push too hard because we can move into stretches a little bit too deeply once we're pregnant. But we're gonna frame the top knee. So whichever knee is on top, take a big breath in, lengthen through the spine. And as you exhale, we're gonna roll gently down. So only go as deeply as feels good for you. Tuck the chin and then inhale as you roll up. Exhale, rolling down. Inhale, rolling up. Find some lightness as you find length and then exhale, let everything soften as you fold. 
Noticing that deep stretch in through the hip, in through the glute. One more time, inhale. Take a moment here, just finding that centering breath once more, inhaling and exhaling. Enjoying this stillness between the poses that we move through between the breath. And then we're going to swap to the opposite side. So that means just simply swapping the legs over. So again, feeling free to modify. You might find one side is tighter than the other. And so you might need to draw it back a little bit. Just again, working with your body, working with where you're at, framing that top knee, finding length, inhale. And then exhale, start to roll down. So it's almost like you're bringing the nose towards the knee, but it might not make it quite there. Inhale as you find length, find lightness, and then exhale as you fold. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. And then coming up, back to center. Find that stillness with the breath. Three full deep breaths. Open the eyes, adding a smile to your face. We're going to come into a forward fold now. So we're going to bring some more props into play. So you might like to sit up on a bolster or you can sit up on a block. That's completely up to you. I am going to use a second bolster so that I can forward fold and be quite comfortably forward folding. What this is going to do is stretch nicely into those legs, but also gently into the glutes as well. The reason we sit up on a bolster for this pose is because sometimes our hamstrings are quite tight and coming up onto the bolster just gives that little bit more support as we fold forward. So come to sit up on the bolster, stretch the legs out in front of you and just take them a little bit wider than hip distance. So it's a forward fold, but slightly wider than we normally have them. Our feet aren't together. So I want you to draw the toes back towards you. So you should feel this really nice stretch up through the hamstring. And then if you're using a bolster, this works really well because we can lean forward and the weight of the bolster, if we squeeze the feet into it, will hold the upper body up. If you don't have a bolster, you can make a stack of pillows or blankets, just anything so that you can allow the body to fold forward. A chair with a pillow on it also works well so that you can have the seat underneath the head. And the idea here is we're just going to stay and breathe. And as we relax these muscles up the back of the legs, flowing up through the glutes and into the low back as well, start to soften. So the act of patience here, giving our body time to open is where the magic is in this pose. So breathe deeply into the low belly. And then exhale, releasing the air slowly through the nose. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale and exhale and then slowly release the upper body up off the bolster. Maybe take a big stretch up, interlace the hands, just find that length through the spine once more. Keep drawing the toes back towards you. An active version of this same stretch and then Draw the shoulders back down away from the ears. So we don't need this second bolster for now. So just move it out the way. We're going to come into our Malasana. So stay up on this bolster. Bring the feet out to the outer edges of the mat and then bring the elbows inside the knees. So you're going to press the thighs into the elbows and the elbows into the thighs. I want you to find some length through the spine. So we tend to want to be like this. I want you to see if you can lengthen that spine up, which brings a whole new stretch to the inner thighs. 
You might also be feeling it around the hips, maybe into the glutes a little bit as well. Keep breathing into that low belly, filling up through the side ribs and to the top of the chest. So full deep body breaths here. Good, and now bring the hands behind you. And depending on how this feels on your glutes, so if it's too sore, feel free to skip this one. But if you can, just add a little bit of movement, taking the knees from side to side. So breathe them down to one side and then breathe them up over to the opposite side. So starting to just get some movement through these hips here. See if you can make the chest nice and open, so getting a nice stretch through the upper body as well at the same time. Good, and then come down off the bolster, just rolling it out the way for the moment. I'm gonna come into our reverse plank, but with bent knees. So the fingertips are pointing towards the hips. So we're adding some movement here. So this is working into the glutes. So feel free to come as low or as high as what feels good in your body, but starting to help bring some circulation to this area. So inhaling up, pressing into the feet, maybe the head and neck falls behind you and then exhale, lower down. Inhale, press up. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, press up. And exhale, lower down. Good, so come back up onto those sit bones so you shouldn't be pressing onto any sore points. And I want you to bring the right ankle over the left knee. So again, a nice stretch into this hip. And I want you to press that right knee away from your body. Still keep lifting through the chest. You might need to walk this foot in a little bit more if you can't feel it, or perhaps walk the bottom in a little closer. Find that point in which you can feel that nice stretch through that hip. And then if it feels good, let's add some movement rocking the legs from side to side. And then release that right leg down. The left ankle is coming up over the knee. Again, find that spot that works for you, either forward or back, and then add that little bit of movement. You notice that I keep my foot flexed and that's just to protect through my knee and also to keep my leg active. So we want to be active in our stretching. Keep pressing into those hands, shining open that chest, breathing fully, belly, ribs, heart. All right, let's release through the legs and we're just gonna find our center once more. So come to sit, bring the hands to heart, find that length through the spine. And just three full deep breaths here. Let yourself listen. All right, we're gonna come into a side stretch now. So you can stay in your comfortable seat. Again, you could bring the bolster back up under the hips if that feels better. We're gonna come down into a gentle side stretch, but we're gonna really allow our body to get there because this side stretch stretches all the way down into that area that often can be quite painful when we're having those progesterone injections. So I want you to bring the hand down and you might stay on the hand if you're able to See if you can creep the forearm down and already you're going to feel this beautiful stretch up this side. And we're not going to rush into the extension. We're just going to stay here. And let ourselves soften. Let ourselves breathe and notice what our body is feeling. So if the body is feeling like, oh, this is too tight, come up a little bit. Come up onto the hand maybe bring that bolster in so that you can use the forearm. 
but that you don't have to come quite so far. So make sure we start to listen. We often find women who are going through fertility treatments, it's such a stressful time and we're so reliant on what doctors tell us, what experts tell us, that we forget to listen to what's in here. I really want to encourage you to come back to listening to self, listening to the body, listening to the heart, listening to what your soul has to say. So then when you're ready to, we're going to open the arm up like we're opening the heart and then just start to slide that hand past the ear. So we don't need to get it straight. If this is kind of where you're at, you're like, that's enough. Stay here. If you can find a little bit more length, stretch it out. Keep breathing into that low belly. Keep noticing where you feel that stretch in the body. And then slowly return the hand, pressing into the one on the floor, coming up. We're just going to find a little bit of a twist, looking over that opposite shoulder. Just kind of counterbalancing that big side stretch that we've done by twisting through the torso. And then coming back to center. Let's roll the shoulders a couple of times. It is a really big side stretch. All right, let's come to the other side. So bring the hand down. Same rules apply. If you've got any props you want to bring in, feel free to stay up on that arm if you want. So as you lean down into the forearm, you'll notice that this opposite hip wants to lift. See if you can stay grounded through the base. So both sit bones pressing into the floor and let all these ligaments and tendons in this side part of the body, allow them to release as you gently lean. This is why we take our time because jamming ourselves up here is actually not letting this part of the body get used to this idea that we're gonna stretch in this way. So we give ourselves time. We give ourselves the breath, allowing circulation to help enable the stretch. Maybe you can come down a little bit deeper, noticing as those muscles start to unwind, you've got a little bit more movement. And then when you're ready, find that hand up towards the ear and then extend as any way that feels good for you. Keep breathing. And then slowly start your return. Find that center line with the torso and then find that little twist. And then coming back to center. And so we're gonna come into our child's pose now. You can bring that bolster back in under the chest or you can just come into your regular old child's pose. We're gonna take the knees nice and wide. And this means whether we're pregnant or not, whether we know it or not, this practice is perfectly safe. We're not putting any compression on the belly. Reach the arms out in front of you. Take your time getting into this pose. You wanna feel anchored back towards the heels, but also allowing the chest to soften down to the floor. So the forehead might find the mat. You could use the hands if you need a little bit more support. Just let yourself soften here. Let the shoulders and neck and face become heavy. And then Press all 10 fingers into the mat and lift the elbows up. This will change where the stretch is in your back. 
Just enjoy this change of movement. Keep the forehead heavy for the moment. And then when you're ready to, we're going to lift the forehead up. Walk the hands all the way over to one side. And then soften the forehead back down. So coming back to echo a similar side stretch here. But keeping those hips anchored back towards the heels. Inhale, lift the forehead, creep the hands all the way to the other side. And then soften back down. Inhale, coming back to center. We're going to come up to our tabletop. So bring the knees in, bring the hands underneath the shoulders. And I want you to find some free movement here. So just rocking and rolling in any way that feels good for you. So if this is the side that's hurting the most, perhaps you stay on this side and do some more circles here. Rocking and rolling through the hips. Maybe sitting all the way back if that feels good. All of our bodies will respond differently to treatment and respond differently to movement. So feel free to not need to be told how to move and to learn how to move just by listening. All right, we're gonna add some gentle work again to this area. So move gently if you're particularly sore today, but find the knees and the hands underneath the body for support. So knees are under hips, hands are under shoulders. Find that core support, so gently drawing the belly in. And then we're gonna take circles through one side. So the knee will come in and then open it out to the side, like you're drawing with the knee, drawing a nice big circle. Use the breath, inhale. Big circles here. Beautiful, and then release it down. Maybe give a little rock from side to side. Nice. And then shift the weight onto the opposite side. So the shin of the opposite side will press in, draw the knee into the chest, open it out to the side. See if you can look forward, keeping that spine nice and long. One more here and release. Find your tabletop, close down the eyes. And just breathe here, three full deep breaths. Let the belly be soft. Let your mind be quiet. And let yourself listen. Good, let's add some movement here in our cat cow. Inhale, lift the tail, lift the head. We're gonna breathe out through the mouth, let everything go. And again, inhale. Let yourself breathe out all your stress, anxiety, anything that doesn't serve you, let it go out the mouth. And again, inhale. And exhale. Last one. Inhale. And let it go. Good. I'm going to step that left foot forward. I'm going to find some movement here in a lizard variation. So let the outer blade of that left foot roll out. So the knee can fall out to the side. You could press on the knee. We're just going to find free movement here again. So moving forward and back. So this will work into the hips, into the hamstrings, and also gently into those glutes. 
It's also preparing us for pigeon, which is where we're going, which works deeply into those glutes. When you're ready, ground the hands back down, walk that foot all the way over to the opposite side. So it might rest in front of that right wrist or you might tuck the foot into the groin, whichever feels more comfortable for your hips. I'm gonna stretch the other leg out behind us. You might want the bolster underneath that left hip for support. Like if your hips are really high and it's too hard to go down, you wanna stay nice and high with the support of those props. So you should feel that stretch quite deeply through the hips and into that glute. Let's add some movement and breath. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale and fold. Inhale to rise, take your time, there's no hurry. Exhale and fold. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale, stay high. Good. Bring the hands back underneath the chest. Draw that back leg in so you've got support to step back to your tabletop. And just come back to free movement, rocking and rolling, releasing any tension that was created through that pigeon pose. And let's step the right leg forward now and come into that lizard variation where we use movement to get into the hips. So moving in any way that feels good for you. Opening up through the knee. And then when you're ready, bring those hands back down, walk the foot across. Feel free to tuck the foot into the groin if you need or work it behind the wrist. Stretch the opposite leg out behind you. Remember, you can bring the bolster in here if your hips are really tight and you need that support. Otherwise, just find some length through the spine. Allow yourself to start to soften into the sensations you can feel through the hips. Find the breath. Let's add some movement. Inhale, lengthen through the spine. And exhale as you fold. Inhale as you find length. Exhale as you fold in. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. Exhale, stay high. Good. Bring the hands back underneath the chest. Draw that back leg in. Step it back to your tabletop. Circle through the hips, releasing any tension. come down and have a seat moving into another pose that's going to work deeply into the hips and this is our cow face pose so from both feet on the floor we're going to tuck one foot underneath the other and bring it around as far as we can towards the opposite hip this leg is going to come up and over and find the other hip so you might need to do a little bit of adjustment here just to kind of feel like you're even we tend to be a little bit lopsided just see if you can bring both sit bones back down. If this is giving you any knee pain, feel free to extend that bottom leg out. If not, hold onto the feet and inhale, find some length. So you should feel quite a nice stretch through that glute. If you want to, you can go a little deeper and just gently lean the body forward. 
Almost bringing the nose towards the knee. Let's add some movement and breath, shall we? Inhale, find length. So feel free to stay in center if that's what's serving you best or exhale and fold. Inhale, find length. Exhale and fold. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. Bring the hands to heart. Three full deep breaths here. Let yourself settle. Let yourself listen. Well done. We're going to cross the legs, so see if you can remember which way to go, otherwise come back to where we started, tucking one leg under. Let yourself adjust through the hips, get comfortable. Hold onto the feet to start and just find that length. Crown of the head lifting tall. Maybe experimenting with rolling in on this side. So obviously we're working into the opposite hip, so you might find this one's a little tighter or a little more free. And then if you want to, we add that breath and movement. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. Inhale and exhale. Find your center, find that length through the spine. Three full deep breaths here. We're going to come down into our Shavasana now. So I highly recommend that you come into a side-lying Shavasana. So I want you to make sure that the side that you've been injecting in is on the top so that you can bring your heat pack and rest it on the top. Use as many props as you need to get comfortable. You could even change to lying in your bed for Shavasana if you like, or if you've got bolsters and props handy. Just come to get yourself as comfortable as possible lying on the side. So when you're ready to, just bring that heat pack onto that sore side, positioning yourself so that you're comfortable and you can relax in the position that you're in. Let yourself soften. Let go through the head. Let go through the neck and face. Relax through the jaw, let the shoulders soften, let the side of the body sink into the floor, ribs, belly, low back, all relaxed, let the hips and glutes soften. Releasing through the pelvic floor, the inner thigh, the quads and muscles around the knees all become soft. Relax the calves and ankles, the feet all the way down to the toes. Let yourself breathe. Let yourself sink into the supports beneath you. And 
enjoy the heat on your body. And let yourself listen. You might start by listening to the mind, the chatter. And then see if you can slow the chatter down. Bring awareness to the breath. See if you can listen a little deeper to the heart, to your center, to the wisdom of the body and of the soul. Let your listening be patient, not searching, resting here, knowing that there's actually nothing you need to do to hear and to listen to your own intuition. All you need to do is quieten and soften and be still. It's in these quiet moments that we hear and that we can connect. So stop searching. Stop the thinking and reasoning and rationalizing. And just let yourself be. to start to wriggle fingers and toes and slowly letting yourself find a way to stretch out coming on up to have a seat when you're ready untangling yourself from all the props Yourself, bring the hands to heart, bow down the head. At the end of our practice, I don't want you to honor me. I want you to honor you for this challenge and for your strength and bravery, for your willingness to give yourself this time to connect, to make space for yourself. The light in me honors the light in you. Namaste.